Hey, good morning, everybody. It's Jeff Gardner, principal of Auburn High School. This is a video for our Auburn High School parents and guardians. Um, before I get into that, I want to let our parents of seniors know that uh, today, today is Thursday, November 4th, um, a video is being pushed out to your seniors. This is our second installment of senior class meetings. And in there, they're going to find out about their high school and beyond plan and their community service, which some students have already finished, but there's 10 total hours. And then a little bit more about uh, caps and gowns and senior gear. So that's the main thing of that. And I just sent it to the seniors. So make sure you have them let you look at it. Um, and there's some deadlines in there. And they're also going to get the most updated graduation countdown. Okay, and then for all of us, um, whether you're a parent guardian of a ninth, 10th or 11th grader or 12th grader, I wanted to give you guys just the latest on, I'm going to call it the good, the bad, and the ugly. We've got a lot of good going on at our school right now. Um, for instance, we have parent-teacher conferences coming up on November 22nd and 23rd, and you'll get more information on that. But I really would like those events, that event, to really focus on your students' academics and whatever their next best steps are for improving their learning. And uh, hopefully those are the things you can talk to their teachers about is really focus on your students learning. And if there's things that are getting in their way, of course, we want to talk about those too. I want to let you know that the vast majority of our students are doing the right things and they're doing them daily. Um, they're showing up to school. They're showing up ready to learn. They're making it to class on time. We realize that students are way up on the third floor that have to get out to a PE class or automotives. Five minutes is tough. Some can do it, some just can't. And the teachers who are teaching at each end of the building are, are pretty understanding to that as long as it's not more than maybe a minute or two late. So just know we're really gonna start enforcing tardies now that the students have had a really good lay of the land and they need to make it to class on time. Majority of the kids are. Uh, the majority of the students are bringing their learning materials and charge Chromebooks with them daily. Um, and they are following our COVID-19 guidance or engaging in learning with their teachers and their peers. One of the things that we've really emphasized this last couple of weeks is making sure that we're wearing our, our face masks, um, our COVID safety face masks, that we're not doing this. And we're seeing a lot of this. And, you know, when you look at the students, you point your nose, they do this. Later on the same day, I'll see the same student doing this. And we're getting to the point now where I'm gonna have to start addressing it maybe with disciplinary measures. And that could just be a phone call home to a parent. So talk to your student about that. And if it doesn't get better for your student, expect a phone call from an administrator or a teacher. Um, the other things teach their students are doing really well is they're reaching out to adults um, when they do need help. And that could be anything from academic help to you know, I can't get to school on time help uh, to behavioral type things that are dealing with social things. Um, for all the students that I just mentioned, the ones who are showing up and, and mainly just doing a good job every day, we have to do some things in our school differently. OK, this year has been kind of a rocky um, experience. Uh, teachers are now going to go back to writing individual hall passes in the past. Uh, last spring and this year, we've used more of a sign out on a clipboard, sign back in. So the students are walking around the hallways without a pass. That was not problematic last spring because we had very few students. We thought we could try to do it again this year. I thought that and at first it was working well. Now we have students that are wandering halls and we have no way to identify if they've signed out, signed in without going through a lot of steps that take time. So we're going to go back to a hall pass system. Students found in the hallways without a hall pass will be led to the main office where they'll have a conversation with an administrator. And in some cases, they're gonna receive school discipline because they're probably skipping class. Um, also, uh, beginning that same week, next week, um, know that students who don't identify themselves in the hallway, okay? They can just show us their pass, their name's gonna be on it. And I'm talking about when students are supposed to be in class um that could carry some disciplinary measures we really need our students to say my name is so and so my name is so and so this is where i'm going well if they don't have a pass they're going to walk to the main office and we're going to contact the teacher and find out if the teacher just forgot to give them the pass because that could happen um, especially when we're changing practices like this so we will work with students but if they are where they're not supposed to be, um, expect a phone call from an administrator and then we will work with them uh, accordingly. 
Also, the other thing is um, students who do need to use the restroom, go get some water, you know, your basic human needs. Some of them might have uh, an appointment with a counselor. They're going to have to show the teacher their email confirmation for their time. The teacher will write a pass. What's going to happen whenever they're getting a pass to go in the hallway? We're going to tell our students you have to turn your cell phone off, hand it over to your teacher, take the pass, go take care of your business because that's important. Teacher will have your phone locked in their desk or sat somewhere so it's safe. When you come back, you're going to give the teacher your form, your hallway pass form, and then the teacher's going to hand your phone back to you. That's a great way for us to make sure we're only allowing one student out in the hallway per class during any time during class time. And then also know that the first 10 minutes of class and the last 10 minutes of class, those are no hall pass situations, okay? So it's that middle 30 minutes of class, students can go take care of their business. And uh, that's worked out for many years here. And we're gonna get back to that and we're gonna hold that really tight. And we're gonna ask all teachers to be very consistent with that. We do have a list of students that have the, uh, you know, the extra needs for, you know, open access to restrooms at any time because there might be a medical condition. We're going to make sure those teachers know who those students are and we'll make sure those students have full access to take care of their needs. So don't worry about that. Everyone that has that need will still have access to that need. Uh, let's see. Um, we really want to get back to 100% focus on learning, growing, achieving, and we want to help all students realize that. Yesterday, I had two separate conversations with students. One was with an underclassman, a freshman, a freshman boy who told me, you know, when the mid-quarter grades came out, he was failing all six classes. I didn't know that, but he shared that with me. And then he pulled his phone out and said, look at my grades now. And he had four passing grades and two, still, he still had two Fs, but he says, I'm working with the teachers and I'm doing this. This is a student who I know is truant a lot the first part of the school year. Um, would show up to classes late. We worked with him. Teachers worked with him, probably his parents too, I'm guessing. Um, he did mention um, some family members, so I know that's going on. And it takes all of us to kind of help kids get moving along. But this is a freshman who's right at the end of October, first part of November, and he's getting it. He's understanding why credits are so important. He's understanding why we are in account to 24 credits, and he doesn't want to get left behind. So please talk to your students. It's not too late. Now's the time to get going. The other conversation I had was with a senior, a female senior uh, student who was letting me know about she's kind of in a conundrum because she's not sure if she wants to go to a four-year school or if she wants to go to trade school. And she's been doing good work, you know, ever since she came here in ninth grade through the pandemic, um, through distance learning. She returned to us last year in April. I know that was really hard to come back in this environment um, after being at home for that long. And she persisted. And the thing is, she really knows what she wants to do. And her biggest conundrum right now is figuring out what she wants to do after high school because she's pulling good grades, even though she's missing a little bit of school because she's got some uh, other challenges she's working on. But we have all kinds of students here, all kinds of students who kind of get it at different times. Some students show up and they know exactly what they want to do. Here's the thing. We can do so much as a school and we're going to do everything we can. And when students have that type of interactions at home with family members, it could be an older brother, could be a mom, could be a dad, could be a grandparent, could be the next door neighbor. When they're having those positive interactions about you know, their aspirations, their dreams. Uh, it's very, very important um, that you continue those conversations and, and maybe at this point in their life, because they're getting older, is maybe do as much listening as you do sharing. And sometimes I just sit back and listen and the kids will kind of solve their own challenges as they're talking it out. So I would highly recommend that if you aren't already doing that. The other thing I want you to know, because this is going to be like a sudden change. I don't know what day it's coming up, but I put in a work order and the work order uh, looks like this. I'm gonna go ahead and present to you just for a moment. Uh, where am I? Okay, should come up on the screen. And basically these are the boys restroom entrances. The first one to the left, that's down in the 500 hall near our band rooms and drama room and wood shops, metal shops. The second one is entrances to our third floor boys restroom and our second floor boys restroom and then the last one on the right that's the first floor boys restroom i'm putting in a work order we're removing the doors 
Okay, we've had so many incidents in these restrooms um, involving reports and confirmations of vaping, of vandalism, of threats, and of fights. And some of the parents out there, I know you guys have seen some of the videos of the staged fights, fights where kids agreed to meet there at a certain time. And in every situation, uh, the, the students had shut the doors. And it, these are usually during class time or during lunch time when administrators are busy and teachers are teaching. So we're taking the doors off until further notice. We're not gonna go to the extreme measures like some states are actually putting in surveillance cameras in their restrooms. Okay, the state of Colorado, uh, some of the school districts there have done that. We're not doing that. We're gonna remove doors as a measure. And then we're also looking at installing some sensors into the ceilings. Uh, so if students are in there vaping, uh, we will get a signal and we will be able to uh, respond to that very quickly. We do have what I call a scarcity of resources. We can't have people just stand outside the restroom door, staff members all day long. It just doesn't work that way. We just don't have the extra personnel to do that. So we wanna make sure we restore safety back to our boys' restrooms. And um, we're hearing of vaping going on in the ladies' restrooms. Uh, we may have to go to the same measure with them, but I wanted to let you know, this is what's happening. If you have any questions, I hope you'll contact me. I hope you know we're working in your students' best interest. Um, the measures we're taking are really most about preserving the rights of all the students the majority of the students who are showing up and doing the right things. And for those that need to get back on track, I really need your help. So talk to your students and uh, reach out, please. Have a great evening. Have a great day whenever you watch this. Hopefully we see you at parent teacher conferences on the 22nd and 23rd. And thank you for all you do.